that was my face after I watched this live with my dad all those years back. I had no idea that they were gonna do that. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for the season finale of season three of Supernatural, episode 16, No Rest for the Wicked. This is a good season finale. Admittedly, in my last review, I said it was great, and there are a lot of moments that are great. There's just one part that does kind of mitigate it a little bit, but otherwise though, this is still a phenomenal episode, so let's get into it. This is the climax of the season. This is the climax of Dean's arc before going to hell. We went through the stages of denial, we went through the stages of maybes, we went through the stages of regret and sorrow, and now we're at the point where we can't have any more delays. There's no time left. It is now or never. The brothers try to come up with a plan in terms of how to take down Lilith, who holds Dean's contract, which might help him survive the Hellhounds. All the while, they are still arguing back and forth about what they are going to do. What is their plan? To use Ruby? To use Sam's powers? What is the level they're willing to go to to try and save Dean's life? All the while, Dean is going back and forth between all seven emotions and everything. He's at that point where He's counting every second before a foregone conclusion in his mind. And I love the fear. I love Jensen's acting in this episode. His voice even sounds different. He has a higher inflection because he's really, really perpetuating that fear that Dean has. And Sam is showing that desperation that he has. Bobby's in this episode, kind of, and he's a good assistant to the episode. However, there, the part that does kind of for me is just the back and forth dialogue between Sam, Dean, and Ruby. I feel like at this point we've had this conversation six times, which essentially we have, and they're just kind of reiterating the same things that we already know. It's almost like it's a recap for a recap. Just drags the episode a little bit because we're really wanting them to get there. We, we know time is desperate, so this conversation just feels like it's just draining time, not just in terms of our attention or the episode length. Your hyper anxiety is going through the roof right now, and they're having this same conversation again, which again, perpetuating the fear, but I feel that maybe, maybe Kripke could have just touched up the dialogue a little bit. You can tell that this is a Kripke written episode. It's just funny to see, it's very obvious to see when his themes, his writing style, when it's his pen that's writing what the characters say, because it's very reminiscent of the first season, and it's not a bad thing, but there are some times where I kind of wish maybe he had assistance, or at least someone would run through it, just to kind of update a little bit with how the characters have evolved. But then they get on the road, they come across a cop who then Dean is able to exploit the power that he has, a temporal power of being able to see demons for what they really are, even when they're in humans. And they go to Lilith's house, which has a, had a very interesting little girl over. I love this aspect of this girl being a complete omen of terror and the family just being absolutely terrified of this little girl where she ripped apart her dog and she's covered in blood and she's all like, hi daddy, hi mommy. I thought that was really well done. I love it how grandpa just, Ugh! I think that the girl did an exceptional job. She creeped the absolute crap out of you. And she also leads to that very <gasps> moment where Sam almost kills her, almost kills a child, which is kind of, again, at the point of, I kind of wonder why Sam's holding the knife and not Dean, because Dean's the one who's able to, you know, say who's who. But I did love the game of cat and mouse, the real show of the brother's skill of how to take down the demons before they get into the house. And then once they get in, once the bell tolls, that's when shit got real. I remember sitting at home watching this episode as it aired with my dad, and we both were sitting there going, how is he going to get out of this? The whole time as we were watching this whole season, we were thinking, they're not actually going to kill him. They're not gonna do that. He's gonna get out of this somehow. And then it turns out that Ruby's actually Lilith. And then she opens up the door. And Dean gets ripped apart. This was the best display of squibs and CG gore and just practical effects that the show has done in a long time. It's one of the best, if not the best, rip that they ever did in this show. The gore is just disgusting. Seeing Dean just have these squibs just blah, blurst out of him, he's rolling, trying, crawling away from the demon dogs, and just being torn to shreds. And then Lilith holds up her hand, 
flashes to white, cuts to commercials, and I shit you not, we sat through five fucking minutes of ads. And then we cut back and we watched like a minute and 40 seconds of remaining footage of the episode. It does end on a great note, don't get me wrong. Sam crying over his brother's corpse. Dean hanging from all the hooks, the disgusting hooks that look like the big ass one in his shoulder. Just screaming out Sam's name, cut to black, and you just hear this echo of pain and terror from Dean calling out his brother's name in the pit. Did you need to wait five fucking minutes to watch it though? That part has never left my mind. I've never forgotten that moment, ever, in the entire time I have been watching this show. That is one of the moments that I will never forget. This moment is one of my favorite moments in Supernatural history. And it's because of the fucking ads. It just, it, it, it dragged it out because I was like, is he dead? Is he actually dead? And then it was confirmed when it came back. I love how this season ends because it did Infinity War before Infinity War did. We were left with a season break going, what is Dean going to do? How is Sam going to bring him back? And then the very first thing we saw in season four is Dean climbing out of a hole. So it kind of lessened the weight of it, but has nothing to say in comparison to what the show has done now to the whole premise of death and the absolute not threat that it is now. I love this season finale. It's one of my favorite season finales in the entire show's history. It's not as great as Swan Song in my opinion, and I think Devil's Trap is still just a bit more concise in terms of how this episode is structured. Because like I said, the beginning of the episode just takes a little bit of time to get the tracks rolling, but once it does, it, it does it well, but it just feels like there's a little bit of fat that could have been trimmed off at the beginning. A little bit more of a reworking with the dialogue just to kind of update it and make it seem a little bit less cardboardy, more fluid, I would say. Otherwise though, I love how the season ends. I love all the questions that is left for you until season four eventually came around. How is Dean gonna get out of hell? What is Sam gonna do? What happened to Ruby? I also was kind of wondering if Bobby got away too. But in the end, I'm gonna give season three, episode 16, a six out of seven. Just, just shy of a seven, just shy of a seven, but it's still a fantastic season for now. Now, I get to read off what you guys have said about this episode, so let's see what you had to say. Holy geez, there's a lot of them from you guys. First one, no rest for the wicked is a masterpiece. The visual effects and practical effects still hold up. The drama still has me emotionally invested and the acting for everyone involved is really well done. Lilith is absolutely terrifying, wearing an animal bloodstained dress. I love how Sarah Gamble describes Dean's hell scene. In my mind, that isn't even necessarily hell itself, it's the starting place. I like to think of Dean as sitting in the chair in the waiting room to hell. It's not even what he's going to experience once he gets into the first chamber. That's just where they stick you before they hand you the, the sign-in sheet. There's so much worse to come for him. I remember seeing this finale live growing up and hoping the show was renewed by and by absolute miracle supernatural transition from the WB channel to the, the, the CW channel. The image of Dean strung up on meat hooks calling out for help and his brother has never left me the same. I actually can agree with that in terms of just like a fantastic finale. I do like the joke that Crowley made hell a never ending cue line later on in the show. But yes, this perpetuated hell as the absolute hellscape that it actually should be. And I didn't know that this was the time when they switched over, but it makes sense. No rest for the wicked, aka supernatural scariest season finale ever. So shocking, so violent, and I love the creepy kid horror going on in here. Although that terrifying Lilith plot about torturing the family should, should maybe be a standalone episode, I feel like we could have got more from that if it wasn't a freaking season finale. But overall, it's great, and it ends with a bang with Dean's gruesome fate. Too bad season 4 ruins this big shock right in the opening scene by bringing him back right away. Yeah, like I said in my review, it, it kind of demitigates that whole thing. Maybe Dean should have gone to hell for a little while in season four, just to make us think that they actually was that it actually was the end for him. Make us suffer a little bit more until he finally comes back to life in a mid-season episode or something. Would have been better, don't you agree? The tension and the feel of, lo of losing Dean could have haunted us a little more. I think would have been more frightening, emotional. Um. I can see both sides to that argument. I understand why they brought him back right away because it does play into the whole prophecy idea and we are starting to see the end of the world happen. Maybe an episode or two, but I think we get enough of the 
uh, kind of the mystery of hell when he talks about it in very fleeting conversations. Also, let's be honest, they wouldn't have had the budget to do it properly. They would have just made it look corny, kind of like how they did in latter seasons. Like, how this room once starts, there's no way they could have perpetuated that for episodes and episodes. Like, that a VFX shot at the end of this episode, this finale, must have cost a bit for the show. No rest for the wicked. Amazing final scenes in this episode. After having cleverly gotten the demon knife from Ruby and made their way to where Lilith was, I thought for sure they were going to manage to save Dean. And then the bottom falls out when the clock strikes 12. Terrific acting from both Jensen and Jared as Dean gives some final parting words of encouragement to Sam. Then Sam's devastating tears at the end. But then Kripke has to twist the knife and show a final scene of Dean strung up in hell screaming for Sam. Good practical and VFX effects really make the scene heart-wrenching and made for a truly miserable hiatus just thinking about Dean hanging there in hell. That was one, if not the one of the toughest hiatuses for me. The show again showing no fear and taking things where most shows fear to go. I guess I was naive in this episode and I think you said you were expecting you expected that ending. Yeah, no, I was not expecting them to kill Dean. I, I was pleasantly but terribly horribly surprised. <laughs> Dean screaming Sam when he's in hell always gets me. Yep, nope, I'm not. <laughs> it does. No Rest for the Wicked is easily in my top three favorite season finales for the show. I love how they actually killed Dean in the last episode and they didn't do some stupid cop out even though he came back in one episode. It also has a really great scene where Sam and Dean are singing in the car. It is a little cheesy but I still loved it because it adds more tension and weight to Dean dying. It is a really good scene actually. My dad and I think that it is one of the best scenes of the episode. And I'm surprised I didn't talk about it in the review. Also, Dean being killed by the Hellhounds is brutal and I loved it. One thing that confuses me is that this device that was used to track down Lilith, but they never use it again. Not a problem with this episode, but it's a little nitpick for the whole series. Yeah, the, you know, it's funny that I've been making jokes about how Dab always has MacGuffin spells and whatnot, but you can see that they had these things slowly start to appear at the beginning of the show, like in its earlier stages. The MacGuffins aren't as obvious as they used as they are now but they were still there the finale is still really good i think dean being ripped apart is the bloodiest the show has ever gotten at least i think and then the cliffhanger of dean being in hell is both great and exciting leading into the next series uh, season the theories i had on how he's going to get out are how to survive being in hell for the first half of season four at the time but man was i wrong all explained in the first episode next season sadly it was probably due to budgetary reasons and the balls to actually kill Dean. I thought they wouldn't do it and find a way out, but nope, I was wrong with there as well. Also, I did not know that the fangirl was being bothered by the female characters because he, they would get close to the boys like, what? Just thinking about that makes me lose my goddamn brain cells. I guess that's extreme fandom. Yep, no, that's... That's what the fan base is now. Ugh. No Rest for the Wicked is one of the best finales of the series. I always thought of this finale not just as a season ender, but as a end for the original setup of the series. After this point, Sam and Dean's relationship is not the same for a very long time. Dean as a character is a lot heavier in emotional baggage. Realistically, the fight is no longer humans uh, versus monsters, but now will expand into a cosmic battle with angels, demons, God, and the devil. The series going forward is the same in, the sa in many respects, but also very different in key areas. Yeah, that's kind of like Harry Potter really like after the, the fourth book everything changed right and same thing happens for Supernatural I can't believe I just made a Harry Potter and Supernatural comparison and there we go thank you guys once again for giving me your comments and thank you guys once again for joining me on this journey we are finished season three and we finished it before season 15 came back that was my goal that was it that was my primary goal there's no way i'll finish season four in time if we finish that before season 15 ends that will be a miracle in itself in the meantime we're going to be doing what we did last time again which is talking about the seasons i'm going to be reviewing season three in its entirety so make sure to give your guys as your little summaries of what you thought about season three depending on how many you do i might do a separate video for that and then i will of course be doing the best and the worst episodes of season three really there's only really one bad one in season three but otherwise guys thank you once again for watching these videos with me thank you so much i appreciate it hope you guys join me for my season three review which will be coming soon in the meantime Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.
Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.